Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Foote. I'm the CEO of Humble, uh, coming to you from San Diego here today. Uh, we love it down in Singapore. We went down to the World Blockchain Summit a couple of years ago and really enjoyed it, really valued making the connections um, there in the city, but we're just too busy to get down there uh, right now. So we'll be coming to you virtually uh, today from San Diego. Thanks, as always, for, for having us. Um, I'm Brian Foote. I'm the CEO of Humble. Uh, very proud to be one of the keynote speakers this year at World Blockchain Summit 2023. Uh, we only have about 10 minutes per speaker, so I'll spend a few minutes going through what we're doing at Humble and then picking out some blockchain trends that we see uh, for the upcoming uh, year or two or or five or 10 in, uh, in blockchain. So again, I'm Brian Foote from Humble. Uh, thanks for having us. So we're Humble. We're a publicly traded uh, company here in the United States. Um, we were private back when we came down to, to World Blockchain Summit last time. Uh, but now we're a public company. We have about 165,000 uh, shareholders here in the United States and around the world. So we're very proud to represent them uh, here in financial technology and blockchain. Uh, it's such an exciting category to be in. So we're thankful to to have the opportunity to represent our shareholders and to build, build in the category. Um, a couple of us are also uh, founders of the first legally registered DAO in the United States called Blocks. Um, so you'll see some decentralized product lines um, in here as well called the Blocks Registry and verified by blocks. Um, part of our charter as a centralized public company at Humble uh, is to is to run on decentralized rails where possible um, to provide new ways of commerce, transaction, and verification for, for users. So it's a really exciting time uh, right now to be building in Web3 and building both centralized uh, public company products, but then also um, running on new decentralized rails that can offer um, really fresh root systems for for building new product lines. <clears throat> so we have a really focused set of core products here at Humble that work work together. They're inextricably intertwined. Um, so we have verified profiles. Uh, digital wallet, which we really see replacing the shopping cart uh, as a more dynamic environment for people to read, write, and transact on Web3. So we really believe that uh, digital wallets, super wallets, will start to be the modality with which people um, not only perform financial transactions, but start to record permits, licenses, renewals, et cetera, uh, ticketing uh, with government and private sector clients as well. Uh, so I'll show you what we have here on humble.com with the wallet and the web platform, uh, but we're also seeing some um, some opportunities with white labeling what we're doing uh, for the private sector by way of sports teams, stadiums, uh, sports leagues um, are all potential targets for us. So we've we've started to get in some deal flow on the sports league side with the AFL. Uh, and then certainly on the government side where people want to go in, they want to search for something, verify a licensure, permit, renewal, um, issue and, 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 and revoke um, properties uh, that can come with the digital wallet. So uh, we're really excited not only to have built out um, some of the things that we have here with the Humble Wallet, uh, and humble.com, but also be transposing those outbound uh, for private and public sector clients. So a little bit of a quick harbor tour of those product lines. We've got the mobile wallet. So you'll start to hear this uptick in things uh, referencing a super wallet, um, <clears throat> fancy name for, you know, mobile apps, digital wallets, but moving into a super wallet. And um, what I think that really underpins is that these are transactional tools, meaning um, they aren't just sort of web two applications where you may have fake profiles, fake bots, fake ratings, fake reviews, fake merchandise, all the all the major market problems of the big web two, uh, big tech providers, uh, now moving into web three, where you're <clears throat> providing tool sets where people can verify who you are, they can verify what product they're buying, um, all of these things that can use a decentralized blockchain registry um, to verify and catalog physical merchandise, um, digital merchandise, and then also services or transactions um, for which, again, there's permits, renewals, licensure, et cetera. So um, that really starts with the mobile wallet as your carrying case uh, for Web3. So some exciting things going on here in this mousetrap. Um, 
some of the unique things that we're doing at Humble that I think really stand out in the market are leveling up on search outcomes. So right now you go into a traditional search engine, you're kind of getting these line links, you know, micro fee style, old school search outcomes that haven't really updated for 20 years in, in many ways. Um, starting to give the customer expectation that you can read, write, and transact on Web3. So what am I searching for? Is it valid? Has it been verified on blockchain? Has it been tracked? Um, can I trace it back to the original owner? Can I trace it back to the source and the value chain? Um, some of our world's biggest marketplaces on Web2 um, are fraught with fraud, forgery, fake ratings, fake reviews, fake merchandise, and so you're constantly playing whack-a-mole with these sellers um, to, to get them off the platform because they're not authenticated on blockchain nor are their profiles verified um, like they are on Humble. So um, we've really given a lot of thought to building out a trust architecture where people and businesses and governments are working from verified profiles but then transposing that into your search outcomes so that you can quickly look for something, find it and transact upon it um, in many fewer clicks and with a lot more um, authority and authenticity than previous search engines. So I'll just keep spinning you through this because we're tight on time, uh, but we have the social media side as well. So again, building from that trust architecture um, where you have a verified profile, a digital wallet, you're interacting with real people, real merchants, real businesses. So really leveling up from Web2 where you're, you're fraught with a number of issues around fake accounts, um, fake numbers, fake impressions. Uh, even on things like ad clicks. So really building out um, a trust architecture against that and using the power of the blockchain with decentralized registries um, so that we can start to authenticate things um, in better ways, uh, both on the physical goods side, but then leveling up into things like human profiles, ticketing, um, and a number of other services that can be used um, to sit on top of decentralized rails. Um, so here's another example of that with the blocks registry. Uh, so, so now you're starting to transpose the Humble Wallet, which is a centralized you know, public company um, product with some decentralized tool sets, meaning we're not sitting on top of your data. Um, we're not monetizing it in the same ways that Web2 does. And then certainly passing you down through a Web3 decentralized rails that allow you to cross-reference what you're looking at, what you're searching for, what you're about to transact upon um, with these blockchain uh, catalogs and registries. So really cool um, and, and unique way of starting to think about how you interact on the web with real people, real goods, um, and verified transactions that can go with you um, both in the public and the private sector. So to summarize, our technology stack is working on a consumer platform that's, that's provided by the consumer products company of Humble, um, but sitting on these decentralized rail systems um, of verified by blocks, the blocks registry, uh, so that people can really verify what they're looking at before they transact in value uh, with each other, with an organization, or with a government. So in its simplest form, here's our platform architecture where you have some peer-to-peer -peer, um, engagement between wallets. So we call it wallet-to-wallet -wallet commerce, uh, but then you also have these verified um, discovery layers like social search engines, marketplaces, et cetera, where people can buy, sell, list, verify, transact, um, and then capture that on this decentralized registry that's not owned by anybody, um, but can be used as a source of truth before you perform a transaction, um, either between you and another person or you and a government. Um, so building out a true trust layer that can't be um, tampered with um, and that can serve as a living registry for everything ranging from land and title to birth records, birth certificates, marriage certificates, um, et cetera. So really, really exciting time to be marrying centralized uh, or consumer products that have a profit motive um, with decentralized rail systems that can save people time and money, as well as transparency um, of, what they're, of what they're buying or what they're selling or what they're getting uh, with any given transaction. So in summary, we've got the public sector, we have the private sector. Um, on the public sector side, we have the first digital wallet contract uh, in the state of California. So we're doing some things with the County of Santa Cruz um, for their uh, My Santa Cruz app 
that we'll be bringing these new technologies forward onto uh, and hope to replicate that with thousands of other cities and counties if we get that right. Um, we won a big private sector contract here recently, a uh, revenue bearing contract with the Arena Football League through 2028 uh, to do some of these things in our digital wallet, uh, as well as with the search engine and the marketplace. Uh, pieces that we'll be putting to work for them uh, over time on their dot com. Uh, and then, you know, just leading into these UVPs of verified profiles, wallets, merchandise and transactions. So um, trying to stay under time here, but uh, wanted to leave you all with some blockchain trends that we see uh, for 2023. Um, so <clears throat> again, you'll see a lot of this reflected in the humble stack as well. Uh, digital wallets. So um, expect to see some uh, migration from cash, checks, credit cards, et cetera, into digital wallets. Um, we think those will help people get more organized and have better consumer behavior um, that gives them plenty of autonomy, but also allows government to interact with people more efficiently. Um, digital identity that, that sits at the root of this whole thing, so verifiable credentials, um, digital identifiers, things like that, um, that allow people to um, verify who they are before they perform a transaction. Um, we definitely want to be giving thought to private, semi-private, and public uh, data sets so that people are using search engines or registries um, to verify what they need to know, but not but selectively disclosing uh, no more than what they need to, uh, so that we can preserve citizen privacy uh, while gaining the efficiencies of digital systems. Uh, search and verification, same thing. So building out search engines that give you better outcomes that you can trans find and transact, transact upon more quickly um, through blockchain verification. This will be even more important as AI comes online. Um, you're going to have data sets that totally outpace uh, verification mechanisms. So we see blockchain as a nice trail behind to AI where you're verifying those, those outcomes of uh, physical or digital um, items and services to make sure you know what you're getting online um, and, and have that verification that goes with um, that service or that product. Um, payment methods, a lot of these things will come online in digital wallets. So there's a lot of CBDCs that are in testing around the world with different governments. Um, also, stable coins, I think, are starting to get a little more traction as inflation becomes such a front and center uh, issue for many countries around the world, um, sort of a roving target there with inflation. So there's some cool things that can be done in stable coins, hybrid stable coins, um, that allow us to fight inflation while improving um, how quickly people can send and receive uh, value between each other. Um, tickets and collectibles, same thing. Uh, am I getting something off the internet that's not correct or that has been duplicated or is a fake? Um, so using blockchain and blockchain registries to not only memorialize transactions, uh, but to make sure you know what you're getting so that when you arrive at the concert um, or the football game, you're showing them a ticket that you know is pure uh, and ready to be used by you and your super wallet. Uh, so we're working on those things as well, and we expect other companies to be doing the same thing. We hope they join us. Uh, personal documents, same thing. So um, as government starts to move into more um, blockchain-based or digital systems, uh, we would expect that personal documents, both in the private sector um, with blockchain as a service and enterprise blockchains coming online and making tool sets easier, um, same thing in the public sector, that, that personal documents will start to live in your digital wallet. They'll start to be authenticated on blockchain registries um, so that there's a neutral source of truth between you and government or you and an organization. You can look at that registry and make sure you know what you got um, and that you continue to own it um, with autonomy. And then lastly, some exciting things that will come online, we believe in voting and record keeping. Um, so thinking about things that have issue and revoke capabilities, um, the need for identification, the need for verification. Um, so we are building our system in a way um, that can provide support. Like we said, we're doing the pilot test um, with the first county in California where we have the digital wallet approvals. Uh, but we're thinking through things like licensure, renewal, permitting, um, how those can leverage our verified profiles, our blockchain-based search engine, the blockchain registry, so that people can find and perform a transaction in easier, faster ways. 
um, and have a neutral registry between them and other people or them and government um, that allows them to capture that commerce in a, in a better way uh, within their digital wallet and on the Humble platform. Um, so thank you for giving us a little bit of our time, of your time. Uh, sorry, it has to be 10 minutes. We'd like to go, go longer. Um, but if you have any other inquiries or questions about ways um, that you think you could put our platform to work, powered by Humble, uh, if you're in the public sector or government um, or the private sector in enterprise, uh, please give us a shout at sales at humble.com. We're a global group, so we love to hear from people around the world, build those relationships. Um, and, and we want to thank you for including us virtually uh, this time around, and we hope to be there in person to see you all next year. So thank you. Uh, we appreciate it, and happy trails.